welcome to complex analysis this is the fifth and the last session on Lorentz series and probably this will be one of the shortest videos yeah, I could have finished it in the earlier one but then the time was already up that's why I didn't okay so what we plan to do is what I started my isolated singularities with <coughs> so now that we had define the Lorentz series for any holomorphic function on annulus, right? Very good. Now suppose I have an isolated singularity. Let us say f is holomorphic on the punctured plane B dash AR. Then I this is zero less than mod Z minus A less than R. Therefore I can consider this punctured disk as an annulus. This we had already seen. Right? And F is holomorphic in this annulus. Therefore it has a Lorentz series expansion, right? So, can we characterize the nature of the singularity at A by means of Lorentz series? As I said very, very long ago, usually isolated singularities are defined after the Lorentz series. Okay, and now we are turning the circle around. Okay. In fact, to define isolated singularity, we didn't need it and we had a very much easier and beautiful characterization and with which we put all the theorems. Remember that all the properties, you know, major results of isolated singularities we proved without any recourse to Lorentz series. Okay, let's come back. So, let F be holomorphic on this or small r okay therefore z equal to a is an isolated singularity okay therefore think of this the near a a zero r okay this stands for z in c so that zero less than mod z minus a less than r therefore this is an unknown this is nothing other than B dash Z A R. Right? Therefore F is holomorphic on the annulus, therefore it has a Lorentz series. F of Z equal to C N Z minus A to the power N N running from minus N to plus infinity. So let me again repeat Lorentz series. What all we need is the function should be holomorphic in the in an annulus. The center of annulus may or may not be a singular point for the function f. Okay, remember our one, one upon z minus one into z minus two, etc. Okay, All right. Because in the a one and a three, z equal to zero was the center of the annulus, and it was not an isolated singularity. Okay, the, so somehow students of complex analysis always, okay, somehow connect. Lorentz series only with isolated singularities. That's why I'm saying this. Okay. Now what we want to prove is, a, okay, then we want to prove a theorem which characterizes, okay, notation as above, then 1, z equal to a is an isolated singularity, sorry, is a removal singularity, if and only if Okay, C n R zero for n less than zero. Okay, so this we had already seen. If you remember right, if C n are zero, suppose C n are zero for all n less than zero, then f of z, okay, is going to be C n z minus a to the power n, n equal to zero to infinity for all z in B dash of A R. Right? So for Z not equal, therefore that means Z not equal to A. At Z equal to A, I will simply define it to be C0. Then F okay, is continuous on B A R and holomorphic on the punctured disk except at one point that implies by 
one of our yearly results, either Murara's theorem or extension of Cauchy Gursa, etc. Epistolomorphic on beer. Okay. Therefore, so we proved if sufficient condition you proved. And if it is a removal singularity, we had already done that. Okay, let me recall the proof if f is removal singularity. I want to prove C n is 0 for all n negative. We saw it in two different ways. One way was to show if if has a removal singularity, then f is bounded in a neighborhood in an open disk B A delta. And by Riemann's theorem, right? Therefore, now I can use the formula for C of minus n, where n is positive. C of minus n. Then we saw something like 1 by 2 pi i n over lower gamma r. This r I can let it to zero. F of w by w minus a to the power n plus 1 dw, etc. Right? If n is negative, okay, suppose n equal to my minus k, therefore this will become k minus 1 and that will be 1 by 2 pi i dal f of w by w minus a to the power k. I hope I am writing everything correctly. Okay. k plus. Yeah. This is n plus 4, therefore minus n, therefore n plus 1 will be equal to minus k plus 1. Yeah? Are you following? Therefore, this is. Okay. So, I am putting n equal to minus k, right? Where, where k is, oh, n is positive, therefore, yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah. Oh, let, let me just uh, sorry. Let me just go slowly. Okay, let k be less than zero. Okay, let me look at my c of k. C of k by definition was one by two pi i in dar i of w by w minus e to the power k plus one. Yeah, but this is same as saying over w dw. This is same as saying 1 by 2 pi i in double over gamma r. Okay, f of w into w to the minus a to the power minus k minus 1. Right? And if my r is less than delta, okay, the, and function is bounded by some constant m, okay, on b dash a, a delta. Okay, then I have this will be less than equal to 1 by 2 pi 2 pi r m into this will be r to the power minus k. This r and this r to the power minus 1 they will get cancelled. Right now k is negative, therefore r to the power minus k minus k is positive, therefore this goes to 0 as r turns 0. This was one of the proofs, standard proofs you will find in any book. I'm just I already did that, I repeated the proof. The second thing is something simpler. Suppose F has a removal singularity at A, therefore by defining suitably, de define F of A to be limit F of Z exists, okay, then F becomes holomorphic. So let me write F holomorphic on BR itself. Right. Now what is my R1? R1 is 0, R2 is capital R, right? 0 less than mod Z minus A less than R, capital R, right? This is my annulus, right? Therefore, now my F2, I can take to be F on B, A, R. Now, my F has to be on the annual region on B dash A, R, it has to be F2 plus F1, therefore, F1 has to be 0. But this is the singular part or principal part. So, this implies my C n must be 0 for all n negative. This is the second proof we saw. Okay. The second thing is Z equal to A 
is a pole of order m if and only if c k or c let us say c minus n is 0 for all n greater than m and c minus m is not equal to 0 where m is positive ok now so let us prove one thing so let us assume again sufficient condition that is c of minus n is 0 for all n greater than equal to m and c of minus m is not equal to 0 therefore my f of z okay has a Lorentz series expansion in b a r okay that will be c of minus m by z minus a to the power m plus etc c of minus 1 by z minus a plus c n r c k z minus a to the power k k running from 0 to infinity right so i am proving the sufficiency part then i have to prove f as a pole of order order m right now we do, do you remember we had already characterized when f z equal to a is a pole of order m if and only if z minus a to the power m f of z okay limit z goes to a is non-zero right so now let us therefore let me look at this z to the power m into f of z you can see it's going to be c m plus c minus 1 to z minus a and so on plus c uh, z sorry c m minus 1 c minus m plus 1 to z minus a and etc minus c 1 to z minus a to the power m minus 1 plus c k into z minus a to the power k plus m where k is from 0 to infinity right so as a limit z tends to a of this equal to c m minus m which is not 0 notice that this is uniformly convergent all these things are uniformly convergent okay in anything other form b b of b dash okay so uh, delta less than mod z minus a less than r right therefore i can let limit z tends to a for every z okay anyway by this also by I have this formula and then multiply by z minus a okay then I get this okay this implies f s a pole of order m at z equal to a okay now remember what what is essential singularity this is this is z equal to a is an essential singularity if and only if z equal to a is neither air neither removable nor a pole neither removable singularity nor a pole okay so when it's a removable singularity all my c minus n's are zero for all n positive and here all c minus n's are 0 for all n greater than some fixed m ok therefore what is left out that gives us a characterization so what is the left out case that means z equal to a is an essential singularity if and only if c of minus n is 0 for infinitely many n in n 
that is in the principal part many of the infinitely many coefficients are not zero look at the principal part okay infinitely many coefficients are not zero right if all of them are zero it's removal singularity if x if only finitely many c minus n are not zero that means after certain n so after some m all my c minus n will be zero if n is greater than m right therefore this is by exclusion now how do we get essential singularity we had already seen that for example e power z and that is going to be z power n by n factorial 0 to infinity then you will look at e power 1 by z that is going to be okay z power minus n by n factorial r which is same as 1 by n factorial z power n n equal to 0 to infinity okay this is essential singularity at z equal to 0 Similarly, in the last lecture, we saw sin z was <coughs> minus 1 to the power n, z to the power 2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 factorial. Right? Therefore, sin 1 to the power z, we already computed. Okay? Therefore, C of minus 2 k plus 1, these are all non zero for all k positive. Right? More generally, if you have gone through my lectures on isolated singularities, I proved if I have an entire function f of z, okay, which is not a polynomial, then f of 1 by z that is g of z equal to f of z 1 by z has essential singularity this is very clear it's not a polynomial that means infinitely many cns are non zero right we had already proved it okay but we also have characterized using Lorentz series. So that's all. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, there is one small thing which one talks about meromorphic functions in this context, uh, but in the first course, you know, we don't need it at present. If necessary, I will give one video on that later, one or two videos, if if there is enough demand on that. But I don't think it's required at present. Okay. So, next series will be on residue theorem and its applications. So, I hope all of you enjoyed this course. Okay, take care, stay safe, we'll meet again.